<laughs> I've, just <read laughs> the jo- I've just read the joke of the week again. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a good one? Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I hope you do. <laughs> 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 Right, I have to get it out of my eyeline, otherwise I'm not going to be able to do this opening. <laughs> We've got to move the screen over it. Oh, Reet Marrows, how's it going? Welcome back to the Blue Army podcast. This is episode 36, and Wills is back. Say hello, Wills. Hello. Ah. <laughs> and later on, yeah. we'll be joined by Dylan from the Prawn Sandwich Podcast, and he's going to give us sort of an independent analysis uh, from a footballing fan slash podcast host. So somebody who watches a lot of football, but not a lot of Carlisle, is going to give us sort of like a, an independent analysis. So that might be a, a useful insight, or at least an interesting mm. insight for people to listen to. But first, as tradition here on the Blue Army Podcast, we start things off with the Blue Army Podcast... Joke of the week. <laughs> Is he having a laugh? I think he's trying to. It's the Blue Army Podcast. Joke <laughs> oh, 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 of the week. <laughs> Get in. Get in. I love it, mate. You're going to love Ridiculous. it. Right. Ridiculous. <laughs> You're going to love it, mate. Right, here we go. Build some anticipation. This is a, yeah. this is a corker. This is a corker. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. I just hope I don't fuck it up. Here we go. Right. What's a good day to see tailless monkeys at the zoo? I don't know. What is a good day to see tailless monkeys at the zoo? Any given day of the week, lad. <laughs> 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 oh my days! Oh my days! Any given day of the week. <laughs> Any given day of the week. Get in! Get in! That's gonna be the best one, yeah. That's gonna be the best one, yeah. Oh, mate, I'm elated with that. I'm over the moon. I'm absolutely over the moon. Right, with the good times already rolling, let's tell everybody what they've got to look forward to on this instalment of the Blue Army podcast. What's to look forward to on this episode of the Blue Army podcast, my script says. Myself and Wills will have a crack about Carlisle's last game, which was a 2-2 draw at home to Scunthorpe. And then, as Mm -hmm. mentioned, we'll be joined by Dylan for his analysis of the game. Then after that, there'll be a look ahead to Carlisle's next game against Sutton United. And then we'll see you off with a little bit of news right at the end but first wills as i juggle between screens on my computer what do you think that could be over there in the distance <sighs> is oh, my eyes deceiving me is that what i think it is oh it might be <laughs> it might be it's sam fishburn he's flashing sam about fishburn. Sam fishburn's <laughs> back for sam fishburn watch it's a quick one this week from sam fishburn he hasn't got a lot to tell us but he's back amongst the goals fantastically so he was on the road this week playing for lancaster obviously against morpeth uh that little town sort of sandwiched between ourselves and middlesbrough or uh, it's sort of a bit of between everywhere and everywhere else in it morpeth but yeah he was uh, <laughs> scoring goals on the road it was a 2-2 draw unfortunately Lancaster went on uh, later on to play in the FA Cup against Morpeth again, but Sam Fishburne didn't feature in the Mm. FA Cup once again. But Lancaster have progressed to the next stage of the FA Cup. So good for Lancaster. And it's great to see that Sam Fishburne is amongst the goals. I believe it's very difficult to get accurate stats from down there in the the, the lower leagues, but I believe he's now on eight goals in seven appearances for Lancaster. Yeah. Uh, mm. So that's absolutely a corker for him. And uh, I'll tell you what, Sam, thanks very much for stopping by, but uh, that, we won't let you linger this week. We'll we'll see you again. Off you go, mate. Off you go. Where's that, where's that, where's that sound effect? <laughs> there it is. Oh, off you go. <laughs> off you go. He's a bit slow on the uptake this week, but off he goes. Off he goes. ta Sam. Thanks very much for stopping by once again. Right, flipping screens. Flipping screens once again. Right, we'll crack on with the rest of the show then. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Into our match crack, mate. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Carlisle's two to draw against Scunthorpe was a bit of a disappointment, to be honest, mate, from my point of view. When the final whistle went, I wasn't incredibly happy once it had settled in. Obviously, the dramatic late equaliser is great for... Uh, yeah. those in attendance and and, and uh, made for it to be quite a feast for the eyes but yeah. not the not the result we we predicted not the result that we would have wanted from the game um I'll go through the Carlo United lineup first, Wills, and then uh, then we'll get your account from things because you had a very good view of all the goals, didn't you? You were behind the they're Warwick all, Yeah, they're all scored at my end. So yeah, yeah, yeah you um, had a very was, good. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I, said, I was going to say something, but we'll come on to it when you actually come to me. No worries, man. <laughs> um, so we'll go through the lineup now quickly. So we started off with Norman in goal again. Uh, there was Mella at the back, Whelan, McDonald, and Armour. Then Riley, Guy, and Mellish. Gibson and Clough in sort of advanced midfield central roles. And Abrahams up front, sort of on his own. It was a Christmas tree formation. A Christmas tree formation always looks very pretty on paper, but I've never seen one work very well in the game. What were your thoughts, Wills, when you saw the Carlisle United starting lineup? Um, You know, I didn't really... You know, I know we kind of discussed um, uh, Jensen, but I, I wasn't really surprised to see Norman start. I was... Pleased to see Gibson start. Um, but I think that yeah, was a well-deserved nah. start. I think that was yeah. a well-deserved start from Jordan Gibson. Uh, he's proved himself in the last games. He needed to start that game because we needed something to sort of like start happening up front. I just don't think that... I mean, he made things work in the central position but obviously later on in the game they changed formations and you had a better view of of, of when the game started developing and, and, and when certain yeah. players were moving around unfortunately Carlisle got off to a terrible start once again uh, it only took three minutes uh, for Carlisle to go behind it was from a corner um a couple of points that I want to make about the opening goal for Scunthorpe um, it was incredibly poor defending but it wasn't yeah. just from the corner. The original um, phase of play that led to the corner uh, was there was a slip by Joe Riley. And I don't want to have a go at people for slipping, yeah. but um, Beach did mention in his comments that that was one of the reasons why he did take him off is because he was slipping yeah. a number of times on the day. Um, and then Mella, maybe it was a lack of control from him, but maybe also it was a lack of communication from his teammates to let him know that he had time. And maybe he could have let the ball you know, go by him and, and, and then take control of it. And we could have like swung it round instead. There was no one yeah. deceivingly sort of near him, um, but that led to the corner. It was a good delivery. Uh, can't really complain about the delivery necessarily. McDonald. Yeah was in there against his number five counterpart. He lost him and there was a great save from Norman, but then Carlisle were just slow, very, very slow to react. And um, yeah. it, was, it was scrambled back in. Wills, it must have been in slow motion from where you were standing, the way the ball was sort of like after the save, still in the box. Um, what was your point of view of, of the goal? From Jake Jarvis, by the way, who... who uh, was it Jake? Yeah. Was it Jake? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, well, it all seemed to happen very fast. You know, they... They had the corner and initially a good save by Magnus Norman and then just wasn't dealt with, came back in and it it looked like a scrappy goal just because it had stayed in the box. When you look at it on the replay, it's not really, um, but the ball does take a deflection on the way back in and um, just maybe that's a, just a bit unfortunate, but, you know, maybe we should have dealt with it better. Maybe we should have... Maybe someone should have been picking that up off Norman's save and clearing it. Um, it was I a team. To... It was it, it was a team um, error, wasn't it? It wasn't necessarily anyone individually. It was it was a, it was a number of different things that weren't clicking uh, that led up to the goal. 
Uh, you can't yeah. necessarily pin it on anybody. Obviously, McDonald losing his man, Mella sort of like kicking it out to lead to the corner in the first place. Yeah. And may- maybe somebody should have reacted to it first when it was in the box, but it, it wasn't necessarily anyone's fault individually, would you say? Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, you can kind of like pick up all those players and say that they all made uh, mistakes, relatively minor mistakes in the build up to it, but it all kind of builds up to basically Scunthorpe put the ball in, it was saved, but still we're able to put it in again. Uh, when I watch it on the, uh, you know, when I watch it on the replay, <clears throat> I can see that um, Mella just loses sight of his man at the rebound. And um, that's where, like, the the guy behind Mellor reacts. He's just quicker to the ball when it, you know, when it rebounds off Morgan. Morgan, when it rebounds off Norman. And um, and then it's off Mellor that he takes deflection on the way in. And then just, it just kind of, it, 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 it lands. It basically lands right on the head of a Scunthorpe player, which is, I suppose, a little bit lucky from their perspective. But, you know, we didn't deal with it. I mean, from the TV uh, angles, it wasn't clear that it went over the line. It was a little bit of a, a, a battle there. Was, was it quite clear that it went over the line from where you were? What, well, it went in the back of the net. Ah, oh, right. OK. It, it, was, it was a quick one then. It just sort of bounced back out, I guess. Um, maybe um, falling. there's a lot of tension in the net because someone was falling backwards into the net maybe all right, oh, right. sorry what did you watch did, 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 uh, did it look like one of those ones that was blocked behind the line yeah it was kind of weird especially the way that when it came back out it kind of rebounded off the off the striker again uh, off the off, yeah off the center back again yeah it does I think it kind of I, I think it hits the net and then is sort of bounces off the flailing foot of a defender. Okay, uh, fair enough. Obviously, obviously, that's why you're here for your point of view of analysis. So I'd like to. Get a little I mean, bit you know, of that's the important that. thing, isn't it? You know, did the ball actually hit the back of the net or not? Exactly. If you've got people tune in to find out, you know, they've seen the goal, they just they just want that extra bit of detail. <laughs> well, hopefully, there's a few people like me, and I'm not just like a moron on his own. I couldn't quite work it out. Um, yeah, I was a bit confused when you said that at first, but I can see <laughs> looking clear, looking right? at the replay now, I can see what you mean. That it does look a bit like it's kind of headed away from behind the line or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> a little bit deceptive, at least enough for me to ask a question about and just clear things up <laughs> for anybody else that wasn't in attendance and, and only had the sort of highlights to go off. Um, you were there, Wills. After the first goal went in, how did you see Carlisle reacting uh, to, to, to the goal? Did they go and chase it? Did, did, uh, what, what, was it? Was it a bit blocky, stuttering, yeah. a little bit shocked? How did, they, how did they go and attack the rest of the game? Because it was later on, much, much, much later on into the half when, when Scunthorpe went 2-0 up. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, when I was, Carlisle didn't react to it at all. Um, they just carried on playing the way that they have been, which we've criticised in the past, mm. which is long balls that are maybe supposed to be kind of beach balls, but end up just being ones that you're expecting people like Abrahams and Clough to chase and even if that's how we did want to play, which I don't think it is, we'd need different players up front if that's what we actually want to do. So, I, I mean, I categorised it to the fella standing next to me as um, whenever we did put any kind of, like, cross into the box or anything, um, it was it was only a scumthob defender or the scumthob goalkeeper that challenged for it, and it was just too easy for them. Scunthorpe didn't really look very good themselves, but you could always kind of see that they might get another goal because because we just weren't, you know, we didn't have any control over the game at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was deceptive again from the highlights. There wasn't very much from from the, from the first half. There was a moment yeah. where it looked like Carlisle were playing quite nice football on the ground, though, and there was yeah. a ball in from I think Mellish. Fred through Clough and they just couldn't quite get the shot away. But it was a very nice uh, turn of, of, of attacking play. Um, looked like the kind yeah. of football that I'm hoping to see more of for Carlisle, getting it on the ground and being able to pass it around at home and using that lovely, lovely surface to our yeah. advantage. 
well, there were maybe one or two moments like that. I can't remember any specifically, but um, you know, Gibson did some useful things with the ball when he had it, and um, that's all I can really remember from the first half. The Gibson yeah, did, looked all right. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it didn't. It didn't necessarily look like many people were getting shots away, but it did look like Carlisle were having uh, at least equal possession as Scunthorpe, and and so both teams were maybe just. Uh, yeah, uh, I think. I think even a half time because uh, I'm sure I looked at the stats at half time, and I think we even had a bit more possession then, but they had more shots. Mm. But um, you know, they, you know, we had the possession, so, but yet. Never looked in control. We were always just chasing, chasing kind of headed balls up head tennis. And you know, when Scunthorpe got the ball, then it, you know they'd come forward with a bit more kind of determination. And so, in so their I'm, own I'm sorry. way, <laughs> sorry, yeah, and just kind of in their own way, you know, without really much skill or sort of sureness just sort of get the ball forward hmm. when, when uh, in, in, the, in the 40th minute Chris Beach made a substitution and he has been making early substitutions but not necessarily taking people off in the first half I think he's done it once yeah. or, uh, this season uh, so far so this is the second time that it's happened this season bringing somebody off in the first half and it was Riley that may, was, was, was sacrificed in the yeah. 40th minute, Chris Beach did mention two reasons in his uh, post-game interview, one of which was um, he wanted a bit more width, which is why he brought Ben and yeah. Dickinson on. And the other reason was because Riley was apparently slipping all over the place. We've already mentioned that he, he slipped and yeah. that kind of semi-led to the corner, which kind of led to the goal, uh, the opening goal in the third minute of the game. Was it apparent that Riley was slipping around? Did he stand out like he was having a bad game for those 40 minutes? Um, not particularly. I can't remember him slipping. Um, the midfield as a whole didn't have a good game. And I kind of think... I mean, it was obvious when... Um, who came on for Riley? Was it Alessandra? It was Dickinson. Dickinson. So, I mean, it was obvious once Dickinson was on that that the reason was to make a tactical change and go 4-4-2, so we've sacrificed one of the central midfielders for that. Mm. And I've never seen a player look more pissed off than Riley did oh, shit. walking around. Because okay. he, he had to walk the full with you know the full way around the pitch as well to get off. And um, you know the you know the Warwick Road end were applauding him on his way around and he didn't look he didn't look happy with it at all. He actually kind of held his hand up as if to say, Don't applaud me. Um oh. sh- shook his head rather forlornly. Because we were trying to work out if he had some kind of knock, if if he looked like he was limping a little bit, but he hadn't had any kind of I don't think he'd had any kind of attention from the physios, and he was just you know walking off. On his, you know, under his own steam, as you do. So he he looked pretty devastated to be, you know, to be going off. And you, I can kind of understand as well because I think that guy was 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 much the poor of the three midfielders. But um, you can't say just is Chris Beach brave enough to bring his captain and last year's Player of the Year off. I can understand leaving Melishon because Melish always might score a goal. So I, I, I can understand leaving him on even when he's not been brilliant in midfield. Yeah, he wasn't particularly bad. Just as a three, they were they just weren't imposing themselves and and guys and guys passing any set pieces were particularly poor. Uh, so you mentioned there that Carlisle maybe went into a four-four-two shape. Did you? That did was you my think... assumption. I didn't notice they were in a Christmas tree beforehand. Um, it's impossible mm. to tell with the forwards that we play with, especially Clough. Don't adhere really to any one formation. So <laughs> I, I just kind of had it in my head as a four-three-three. That first thing I didn't actually notice, <laughs> but. Kind of, I couldn't work out who was in which part of the four three three. Uh, so Clough and Abe, especially Clough, would just pop up. Every, it, it will pop up everywhere, but it never pop up in the right places. 
<laughs> uh, there was a moment in the second half with Clough, but we'll we'll get on to that. You would have had a yeah. good view of that as well. Right. Um, before half time, the away side won another corner, and it was another well delivered effort. This time, Armour missed his header, and Scunthorpe centre back had a free header. Again, nobody on the back post. We mentioned this last week about Carlisle not having people on the back post. Yeah. I don't think you, I don't think this week we can blame Norman not for coming out and collecting it. I think it was a good really good ball in. It was on the edge of his six yard box, so a difficult yeah. one to come out and claim. But it's frustrating, mate, to you know to see the same errors uh two weeks in a row now. Not um, and also two two corners sort of lead into the goals against Carlisle at home. Um just just showing a little bit of uh, a lack of organization concentration maybe what were your views on the second goal um yeah so i mean i i can't see looking at the corner who was even supposed to manage um can't remember his name um the the center back who scored their number six it, it it breaks away from kind of like quite close to the edge and maybe gibson's supposed to be watching him but um it, it, it's it's hard to tell from looking at it who was supposed to be marking him and kind of heads it into the ground and, you know, Norman's standing up. He's never going to get uh, a ball that basically bounces just to the right of his right foot. Now, I, I don't think this week either of the corners, Norman should have necessarily been able to come out and claim. Uh, obviously, yeah. we've spoken about there being a, a lack of, um, I don't know, commitment, communication, uh, yeah, the d- decisiveness, leadership. Uh, you can't quite. Is it all a bit of everything? Is it just one of those things? I don't know what's yeah. going on at the back for Carlisle at the moment. I thought Mello was kind of starting to answer those questions for us. Um, but from what I've heard uh, on little bits of fan forums, is that uh, Beachy was t- taking chunks out of Mello for most of the game um, in the second half, especially when he was because he was on that side of the pitch. Yeah, yeah. Um. It's, it's, it is frustrating, but I will go back to circling about Norman and maybe starting yeah. Jensen. You mentioned it just before there about being surprised that Jensen maybe didn't get a start. I think it is time that he did get a start. Norman wasn't completely flawless in the first half. He made an error very similar to an error that he's made before, sort of yes. mis-kick, mis-kicking simple back passes straight into attackers. Yeah, surprising he's not actually conceded a goal through doing this yet because he's done it a few, he's done it like maybe three or four times this season, but always either the striker fluffs it or one of his defenders rescues him. So, not to me, actually. That's, to me, that's a sign of a very nervy goalkeeper, um, not yeah. somebody that your defence is going to have a lot of confidence in. If your defence feels like they have to constantly bail your goalkeeper out, that means they're not going to be as free and easy to maybe wander that extra couple of yards forward, uh, especially yeah. the fullbacks where it's important that they feel like they can go forwards. Um, I don't want to completely say, you know, Norman didn't necessarily have a bad game. Like I said, I don't think neither of the goals were his yeah. fault necessarily. It's just that he's he's not been impressive recently. He really hasn't been. No, and he, you know he, he had some other moments in the half that you know di- didn't create big enough problems for it to make the highlights or anything, but um, but still kind of like started to kind of c- convince the fans around me that 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 Norman was part of the problem. And um, started getting a lot of stick from his own fans in that half. Now that was a goal that was that was late on in the second half. So Carlisle didn't really have much of a chance to react to it, but it did make me think about making substitutions so close to half time, and is that going to maybe have a negative effect? on the team as a whole and maybe holding off just another five minutes might have been a better option. I'd, you know, just, just just to sort of like show that little bit of stability and confidence in the side. But if Riley was playing that terribly, it's it's a hard one. You know, it's only another five minutes. Um, yeah. I, I, when you bring somebody off in the first half, I think it does affect the mentality of the whole team. It, it's, a, it's a message to the whole team that like you're not playing very well. 
Well, that's it. I mean, like, I'd, I think you could have kind of taken Riley off a half time and it not being as 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 big of a as big of a impact for him on his morale, you know, because taking a player off a half time is fairly common. It's just kind of I think it's just kind of like hard baked into players' minds that if you come off in the first half, unless it's through an injury, then that's a big sign that your manager has no faith in you, that you are considered a failure. And I think that's just kind of what players are going to think. That's why Riley looked so unhappy. And, you know, maybe Riley also thought that, you know, he hadn't, you know, there was no particular reason other than tactical that we needed to take a midfielder off and bring someone more attacking on. There was no particular reason that you could single Riley out and say that, and say that this is why you're the one that's coming off. The only kind of thing that that I do think is that it, it is that fact that that guy's the captain and is is Beach brave enough to bring off a player that he's obviously put a lot of, um, you know, he said a lot of good things about. Is he um, and and also, um, is it worth always leaving always leaving Melly Sean because? Because he, he he might just pop in and score a goal out of nothing. Because Melish is the sort of player that'll that that'll sometimes he'll he'll get a goal even when everyone's playing awful. Yeah, yeah, it's important. So, it, it is important because Mel. I I feel like when when Carla came out for the second half, I highlighted a couple yeah. of players, and Melish was one of those players that really sort of you know something's switched. It feels like Melish yeah. is one of the few players in the Carlisle team that listens to Chris Beach's halftime team talks and it does yeah. affect his mentality going into the second half and, and he, he looked like a driving force. Um, what yeah. I will say is that Carlisle did at least look like, from the highlight package, that we came out for the second half fighting and we were we, we were up for it. Mellish, Dickinson and Gibson were all showing more desire and more drive. Now, there was an opportunity a little bit early on in yeah. the second half where Clough went through on goal and I've watched the replay a couple of times. I think he went down very soft. Um, there was appeals from the Warwick for a penalty and so there should be. That's what the home yeah. side supporters are there to do. doesn't matter if it's a penalty or not. You've got to just try and convince the referee either yeah. way. Um I mean, was it what from where you were standing? Did you did you did you did you shout penalty but know that it wasn't, or did you think it was a penalty? No, I mean, like myself, well, I just kind of groaned. It was never a penalty, and the guy next to me actually said that. A couple, the, 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 there was a few people around me when he get those out. Like, get up, Clough. That's never a penalty. Stop going down like that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, there were the there wasn't. I mean, obviously, there's going to be kind of some shouts from the worry, plenty of shouts for appeals for a penalty whenever a player goes down in the box. But there was a there was a hell of a lot of criticism aimed at Clough for going down, mm. um, and they were and, and they were frustrated as well because he he picked up the ball in a good area. I can't remember who passed to him. It was maybe Mellish, and um, and. You know, it looked like a real a real chance, but he didn't get his shot away. Ended up crowded out. Um, he basically it looked like he tried to squeeze between two players because they got between him and the ball. So he tried to squeeze through them and then fell over. Yeah, it looked like he was hoping for impact, unfortunately. And yeah. The, ref the referee was in a very good position uh, from, from what I saw. And, and uh, OK, fair enough. If, <laughs> if some people were giving him a bit of a go. Some of the Carlisle faithful are starting to turn a bit on Clough. Um, I hope yeah. he can... I hope he can start scoring goals, or if he gets dropped, and and at least show some real desire coming off the bench. Because yeah. now he, he's got some serious competition. Um, was was that was was that quite close to him being substituted off, or or did it take a little bit of time uh, uh, up until he got substituted off after that incident? Um, I can't remember, I, and I haven't got the. Um... If you look on um, something like Transfer Market, it tells you what time things happened. I don't think it was too far before that, though. And um, it was about halfway through the second half. And, you know, 
it got to the point where fans were like saying Clough needs to come off. And then when Clough came off, there was a little bit of kind of like jeering, a bit of like, hey, finally. So he didn't get a good reception from the home fans either yeah. during the match or when he was substituted. Mm. Um, oh, Car- Carlisle kept pushing forwards. And like I've mentioned there, um, there was a couple of substitutions. First of all, uh, Abrahams came off for Young and then Alessandra yeah. came on for Clough as well. And yeah. um, Young got at least 35 minutes under his belt at Brunton Park. What, did, did, you, did you rate him much? Alessandra visibly, for me, had an impact on the game. But did you, did you, did you rate Young's impact on the game? I didn't see much from him. Yeah, I thought Young, he, um, he, he came on and he showed a lot of energy. He chased after things. He tried to win the ball in the final third. Um, he didn't really get much in the way of a sniff on goal. But he was able to put himself around and affect the game a bit. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's still a, you know, he is just a young lad. And so, like, you know, wouldn't expect too much from him in terms of actually coming on and changing the game. But certainly he, he came on and he contributed towards... Just it just feeling like we had a little bit more control of it in the you know in the final third. Uh, at that point, it was Alessandra and Young um, and Gibson. Although we had kind of gone to more of a four four two, um, but Gibson and Dickinson were both kind of running in and getting involved. Um, and Gibson had a good game overall. Dickinson did well when he came on as well. So it did seem like that was. Uh, a, a, you know, a bit of an improvement having that front four on compared to the front three that we started with, with Abrahams and Clough. Um, yeah. The, the, Blue, the Blues eventually scored in the 80th minute uh, to make it 2-1 when Gibson picked up the ball on the edge of the area and uh, did very well to sort of twist and turn and got a very, very, very good shot off uh, into, into, the, into the bottom corner, just drove it past the goalkeeper into the bottom corner. Yeah. Very good shot, very good work from Gibson. Uh, what was your point of view of the goal? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it was very good work from Gibson, Um uh, so you can see, um, and Mella as well, who kind of well, let's see. Well, Mella brings the ball forward, loses the ball, <laughs> and then yeah, and then Gibson pounces. But I think Gibson had the ball as well before Mella had it. So mm. like just trying to remember, but he doesn't show on the highlights. So um, yeah, he, he was, and I've seen him do this sort of in the last game as well. He he does look to try and win the ball in the final third and you can see him there when Mella's battling for it and as, as soon as he spots that the player that the defender has lost control of the ball a little bit he's very quick to uh, to run in wins the ball and then just spots the opportunity to have a crack at goal from out just on the edge of the area and you know just uh, places it really well into the bottom corner and you know, it, it did feel like it came against the run of play, even though we are, even though we were doing better in the second half, we weren't doing better to the point where I thought where I thought a goal was coming. So it was, it was like, it it was a bit out of the blue, but um, you know, it was good to see that we finally managed to finally managed to break through. Uh, Generally, very you know, fairly weak defense. It wasn't like they were being particularly dogged. We were just really struggling to basically break down a rickety garden gate. Yeah, Carlisle had a number of opportunities before the goal went in, but thankfully we did get it to two one, and it was then when uh, you really felt that we were going to uh, go on to score again and and maybe even turn the whole game around. There was at least you know ten minutes left in the game and and it was right at the death when, when Carlisle did 
get the equaliser. Um, it was a great ball from Mella on, on the right-hand yeah. side. A beautiful delivery. He had a very similar cross uh, in the last game where Alessandra met it and nearly uh, scored a similar effort. But this time it was uh, Dickinson who was arriving late at the back post. And he sort of like hit him in the face and then came off his shoulder and, and, then, and, then, and then off the ground and then into the back of the net. It doesn't matter how they go in, as long as they go in. And uh, you've got to be buzzing with that. At the time, uh, it sounded like Brunton Park came alive. Yeah, I mean, you know, you watch it again and it's a very good header from Dickinson as well. Um, and you mentioned Mellor in the build-up um, and then Gibson getting the cross in. So Mellor and Gibson working well together again. Uh, yeah, at, at, at the time, it, it felt, is it possible to be both, both delighted and frustrated at the same time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the celebra- because the celebration is immediately tinged with the fact that we're celebrating scraping a draw at home to a team that was second bottom or third bottom of the table. And generally, you know, throughout the game, Scunthorpe weren't very good. So, you know, you kind of you kind of know that it's not a good result, even as you're celebrating the fact that you've scraped a draw. Yeah, yeah I, that, that, that kind of emotions. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 that was kind of lending itself into sort of like what my last uh, little uh, question was going to be for this section yeah. of, of the episode was, was like, it, it is points dropped for Carlisle at the end yeah. of the day. Um, obviously, elation yeah. in the moment, and it must have felt really yeah. cool at the time. But on reflection, it is points dropped for Carlisle. Yeah, I mean, the points were dropped in the first half or dropped before they even stepped you know, they were dropped as soon as they stepped out on the pitch because they they just went out with the with the wrong mentality or the wrong personnel, the wrong formation, or they just they just went out and underperformed. So they were always, you know, it, it kind of felt like it was points saved because we were that poor. But um, you know. It's just it was just an indicator of where we are as a team at the moment, which is not 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 good enough to really come close to challenging for playoff places as things stand. Need to improve. Oh, mate, it's just getting a bit depressing over here, isn't it? <laughs> do you know what we should do to to, to liven things up a little bit? I reckon we should get Dylan involved. What do you think? Yeah, it's about Dylan o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it's about Dylan o'clock. Right, we're gonna we're gonna admit Dylan to the room and uh, see how this goes. See if Dylan can cheer us up. Can you hear us, Dylan? Yeah, come hey, on. Hey, here Hello. he is. Um, <laughs> You're right. I'll, beho- I'll I'll apologise on behalf of of Will's. His camera's not working today, but yours is. You look at you. You look handsome <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome back, Dylan. How are you doing? You're right. Yeah, good, you? Yeah, spot on, yeah. mate, spot on. Wills, you want to gag in? No, you're not, you're not feeling good? You all right? No, yeah, um, it's good to meet you, Dylan. <laughs> you too, mate, look, you too. Look, look, look forward to hearing you, uh, look forward to hearing your views on the game. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So Dylan's here to sort of give us an, an independent view from uh, somebody that isn't necessarily a Carlisle fan. Uh, obviously, Dylan, you're from the Prawn Sandwich podcast. You've been on this podcast before. We'll we'll let you talk about that a little bit later on. But first of all, mate, me and Wills are feeling a little bit depressed. We've just done a bit of a match report about the Carlisle game. We're not happy. We think it's points dropped. We really do, yeah. mate. We think it's points dropped. What were your views on the game as a whole, as, 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 as a sort of an outsider? What did you think of the game to watch as a neutral fan? So, obviously, I, I'm going off the highlights. Um, I didn't go. I was at work. But... <laughs> From what I from extended highlights, seem to control most of the game. To be honest, um, they just can't defend crosses at all. Like That's a- at all, it's embarrassing. At the, some of the uh, some of the defending, but football wise, like last season, they were known as one of the better footballing teams in the league. Obviously, they had the where they were top for a bit. Beach yeah. obviously wants wants them to play football. They still look like they've got that through ball in them, that little killer pass. It's just getting it consistent, but then. They lost a few defenders, haven't they, in the summer? The centre half, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, well, if you include Reese Bennett as well, and then like the yeah. goalkeeper, so 
We've ended. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't like that new goalkeeper. I thought uh, <laughs> the lad who's went to Barrow, I quite I think he's he, he's much better. From what oh, I really? Seen. From what I, I said, seen. this is oh, a, the a guy, conversation. The, the, go on, Will. Sorry. I think this is what we were always talking about last season because. I don't think you were ever that big of a fan of farming, but not I really. Was I wasn't really keeper. convinced. Yeah, I yeah. Made, all... I probably made a mistake for them this week um, in the Bradford game, but um, I, thought he was, I thought he was good for us. I see Dylan Carlisle. Mm. I've got a player, a goalkeeper on loan from Burnley, who's sitting on the bench. He's like, he's like Donnarumma from Norway, mate. He, he's huge, right? And yeah. I just, I want to, I want to see him play because I reckon he can come. I reckon he could command the box in League Two. Um, but I only got to see him in pre-season against Chorley, and he's not really played for Carlisle since. I don't watch the Papa John's Pizza Cup. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not interested no. in that. <laughs> so I don't take anyone's performance seriously in that one. I'd rather, I'd rather take the performance against Chorley more into account than that. It's a, but, um, it's a glor- glorious trophy that you're discriminating there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's Sunderland's looking, way to Wembley, is it not? <laughs> look, looking to retain it this year. <laughs> the proud holders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I might, I, I might, I might, I might let you talk a little bit about Sunderland a, a little bit later on, mate. But um, we'll stay focused on the Carlisle game. Was yeah. there any? Carlisle player that stood out and impressed you on the day was 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 there anybody's performance from those highlights yeah, that maybe the, for oh he might he, we could have him he'd play all right for Sunderland him maybe yeah, have I wouldn't him. go that far <laughs> <laughs> um, no but a few yeah um, obviously it's easy but the new lad the Gibson on loan couple of neat touches obviously his goal was well signed, taken signed him over from Ireland he cost us twelve thousand pounds. <laughs> all right. Nah, big money at Carl, mate. Big money. Good finish. Oh, yeah. Good finish. <laughs> a few nice little touches. Um, yeah. From what I can say, what I've seen, it's kind of highlights the armour, left back seat, we've evolved in a lot. I know you want to talk about the formation and yeah. if he's going to keep playing that formation, the fullbacks are going to have to be involved because they're going to have to offer the width. Um, he seemed to be involved in everything. And like I say, from the highlights, Gunford, apart from the corners, didn't look like they really troubled. Troubled the defence. Um, yeah, just set pieces from what I could say, what I'd seen, uh, and I went to so I went to Carlisle Blackpool in pre-season. Okay. Um. So obviously I'm not gonna like hammer people because um, Blackpool are the like two leagues above and whatnot. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't like that Abraham's at all. I, I I don't I don't know what he offers, and uh, from what what I've seen, that Alessandro is just a brighter spark. Just they like, come in deep, getting involved more, and seems to do a lot more. And, like this, these highlights that I watched, he, Abraham wasn't even on one mm-hmm. for all the good yeah. like attacking play they had in the first half. He wasn't on any highlights, yeah. and I just felt I came away from that Blackpool game and I was thinking he, he's, he's, I don't like him. He's not good. Yeah, he's improved a little bit. I don't, I can't remember the Blackpool game, but I can't remember being impressed with him much in pre-season. But I think he's had a couple of decent games. Since yeah. then, um, well, Alessandro is it definitely a bright spark. Sorry, yeah. God, Will. Sorry, I was say, Saturday wasn't one of them. No, it, it really didn't look like it. Yeah, but Alessandro did come off the bench, like you said in the highlight packages. He did yeah. stand out like a player that wanted to get on the ball and bring it forward. Yeah. Still, and he, he did. He did stand out like one of those players. Now, what you just yeah. mentioned there about the Christmas tree formation, the formation that Carlisle United lined up in on paper, like I said to Wills a little bit earlier on, it looks lovely. It looks lovely on paper, but I've never seen anyone execute it, mate. Like I've never seen it work. I've never seen it win a league <laughs> title. You know, I've never seen it really work no. um like do, do, what are your opinions on the christmas tree formation um i, I don't mind it but i think you have to have you, you're gonna have to have really really good fullbacks really fit fit fullbacks that are gonna bump yeah. up and down all game and then you're gonna have to have either two or one really defense minded midfielder just to cover that cover their runs if they go and you get caught on the break so I'm not going to sit here and act like I know everything about Carlisle players. It's it's just I think it's more a case of that. If you have you got, is it because of lack of wingers? Is it is it because there's like more midfields? I don't know. But if you're going to make yeah. it work, you have to get it right because it can probably if he goes wrong, he's just going to get so much stick for it. 
That's a good, that's a good question, man. Dylan, what do you think, Wills? Is, is it a lack of wingers? Because I think he's got a point there. We don't, yeah, I mean, we don't really kind of do wingers much. We tend to, um, <laughs> we, you know, we tend to kind of put players like Alessandra and Toure sort yeah. of wide, um, who are maybe more used to playing in the middle. Um, but uh, since Gibson's come in, I think he looks a bit more comfortable in that position. But he's not a winger, he's, but he does kind of cut inside from where he starts wide. And so I think, and Dickinson has it in him, but he, I think he also kind of likes to likes to cut in more than a traditional winger would. Yeah. I like I like Dickinson a lot in preseason. I thought Dickinson yeah. was a good player. Obviously, he came on he came on uh, as a substitute in the first half, um, which 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 uh, me and Will's discussed. And and Dylan, you can give us your point of views on that. When, when a player gets substituted off in the first half, it's not just demoralising for the individual player that's being substituted off the pitch. It's a signal to the whole team that the game plan is just not working and things are going to have to change and everyone's playing poorly. And um, in my opinion, that unsettledness and lack and turn off of concentration perhaps because of the substitution might have led to that second goal against Carlisle and Scunthorpe going 2 nil up. Now, do you think first half substitutions have, I, I can have that kind of an impact on a team? Um, yeah, I think I was going to, I was going to ask, cause I didn't know if it was an injury or whatnot. Um, now that I've heard it's not, it's a bit, it's a bit harsh to maybe do it. One nil, and it was like what the fortieth minute. So, don't you wait five minutes to do it? Yeah, I said that, like if yeah. it's going, if it if it's going tits up and you're three nil down at fifteen minutes, then right, fair enough. But one nil, forty minutes, just get in at half time. Then yeah, well, change it. I, well, I was saying that he, he um he, he he walked around the pitch to get off, and he walked in front of where I was in the Warwick Road end. He didn't look happy. Mm, well, <laughs> might be something else for him to deal with then. <laughs> yeah. what, I, what, what I didn't mention with you, Wills, is that see, right at the end of the game, there was an yeah. incident with the referee, and there was a yellow card for uh, for both for both the Scunthorpe manager and the Carlisle manager because yeah. you were at the because you were at the game, Wills. Can you can you maybe fill me and Dylan in in what happened there? Yeah. Um, so, and this is kind of uh, the words of Chris Beach afterwards, who kind of like was asked what happened, and he kind of filled in the details. Um, so there was only five minutes of injury time and it did seem like Scunthorpe were wasting more time than that. I wouldn't go out and say that they were really bad time wasters, but obviously they're struggling in the league and 2-0 up and then in the final 10 minutes, 2-1 up. They're going to waste a bit of time. Um, players are being substituted and doing the slow walk-off goalkeeper putting the ball down for a goal kick, eyeing it up and then picking it up and going to the other corner. Um and there were a lot of the, the there were a lot of finicky a lot of finicky fouls as well. So anyway, so Chris Beach in in his opinion there should have been like at least six minutes of injury time. And there was five minutes so he was having a go at the he was having a go at the fourth official and then when the goal went in deep into the fifth minute of injury time, apparently he just screamed in the fourth official's face, <laughs> like, or, <laughs> celebrate, or, or celebrated in celebrated in the fourth official's face, and he got booked for that. I don't know about the scum top manager whether he just kind of got uh, got involved at that point or something, but. <laughs> that, that, the, the reason the reason I bring it up is because I want to get I want to get Dylan's opinion and yours as, as well, Will, on, on yeah. something. I got I got a message of somebody on social media about this, and they called Chris Beach a disgrace. Now I don't think yeah. I, I don't think necessarily that makes him a disgrace. Um, I think there's a little bit of like unfair. It's, it's, it's a difficult one, and I don't mean to point out sort of sexualities and blah blah blah, but almost because the referee was a female, it looks a little bit worse that he he got booked to give an abuse yeah. to to a woman well, it was a fourth, it was a, no it was a fourth official he was given abuse to not uh, the referee mm. um it was i mean I, it's, I, it's, I, emba- I it's embarrassing if... to be told off isn't it to, to sort of have somebody come over and go there's a yellow card you behave like did you not think uh yeah but i don't know kind of managers get yellow cards now don't they it's kind of been a couple of seasons this thing where the referee will actually show a yellow or even a red card to uh, to managers, 
Um, I, I I didn't even like really notice the yellow card being shown until kind of hearing at the end. People called him a disgrace, um, but uh, some some fans were a little bit too sensitive on behaviour. <laughs> And like I don't know, I think some fans want everyone to be behaving like twenties, jolly good show, you know. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I, concede, I think... <laughs> concede the last minute or, or score the last minute equaliser, <laughs> and then just uh, go over to the upper uh, to the opposition man and just shake his hand, jolly good chap. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely think disgrace yeah. is 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 well too strong worded, but like, Dylan, yeah. what? What are your views? I saw on, people on, did, yeah. I saw yes. someone did call him that, so I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's too, I think it's too strong. But Dylan, what are your sort of opinions on 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 your man? If your manager got a yellow card or, or a red card, or is that is that is that something that you would find embarrassing, or is that something sort of like go on? He's getting involved. Do you know what I mean? He's showing a bit of passion and heart. Uh, well, Lee Johnson's about four foot four, so it's quite funny when he kicks off. <laughs> um, <laughs> But nah, just nah. It, his team just got a last. His, his yeah. team just got a last minute equaliser in a game that they probably should have won. So yeah, <sighs> I mean, football you know, is going to happen. If he just stood there silent, it'd be weird, wouldn't it? Yeah, and yeah. he just he just got a booking for it. It's not like he's facing some kind. Yeah, of Yeah, I, I think people calling him, call him, call him a disgrace are probably people who. Probably want him sacked for other reasons and just will use that. Yeah, as a, probably as well. I mean, I've, we'll I, I know, I know we'll at least that as a, another thing yeah. to put on him. And yeah, I mean, I know at least two fans online who have kind of now become have fallen into the beach out camp. Oh, really? <laughs> so it's, a, it's, it's 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 a gr- a small but growing camp. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, from from what Dylan, what you've already mentioned there, like uh, uh, when when a manager loses sort of key defenders so close to the start of a season, I don't think it's going to be fair to criticise anybody until they've had at least another transfer yeah. window to sort of sort that problem out. So yeah. I think where I think it'll be a good result if Carlisle can stay within touch of the playoffs from now until the end of January, and then see what the newer signings can do if he can bring 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 more players in and 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 make use of, of different outlets. But I don't think it's... At the moment, he's had to do a patch job, you know? Um, and he's just kind of like... Sat, Mella's like a bit of a mercenary in, in a way, the right back that was playing for us um, because we sold Tanner uh, to, to Bristol City uh, for, for yeah. six figures. And that was, you know, you can't you can't stop somebody from going to the championship from League Two at all. That's It's impossible. But I think it's unfair to criticise the manager. Um, Dylan... What would you like to see from Carlisle United if you were the manager going into their next game against Sutton? Would you stick to the Christmas tree formation? Nah, I got a, <laughs> I, I got a four, four, two, three, one. Looking at the players, I, I can see. Yeah, um, that doesn't mean it has to be wingers. You can have a narrow four, two, three, one. Um, and I've had a Sandra up top. Um. <laughs> I'd have at least four days working on set pieces. <laughs> uh, what's our record like with conceding set pieces during the season? Because I know we can uh, both both our goals we conceded with set pieces in that game. Um, it looks I'm pretty like sure last season. Well, I'm pretty sure last season we were good at, at dealing with set pieces. I don't know how that's changed this season. But there's just a lack of leadership in Carlisle's defence, and like I said, it's going yeah. to take a bit of time for that new defence, because yeah. that was never supposed to be our back line going into the season. It's just going to take a bit more time for this back line to, to sort of gel. And they might not, because like I said, we've just sort of stuck them together and we've hoped the, for the best. And some of them might just not work out. Some of them might not be good enough. Some of them might be might not be trying hard enough because they just, you know, uh, they signed the contract because they, they wanted to be a professional footballer for another three or four years when actually they could have maybe signed for a team like Wrexham. Um, for similar money, but they didn't want to make that yeah. drop down to that division. Um, unfortunately, that's where our recruitment 
seems to be at. It seems to be uh, looking for obscure players from Ireland and the lower leagues when we look to recruit. And don't get me wrong, recently it's resulted in us in us selling players for good money, but they never came from the fucking lower leagues, mate. They never fucking came yeah. from there. Like Hayden came from Wolves, you know, like that. that, that and yeah. that's, that's money. And Tanner had uh, Man United in his, in his academy history. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these these aren't coming from non-league. They, you know, they never played in non-league. Uh, before they came uh, to us, so. Hayden did. Yeah, Hayden did play non league because Hayden ah. was Hayden was on loan at Stourbridge before he came to us. All right, um, okay. Yeah, Tanner well, like, uh, Morecambe uh, and Morecambe. yeah. But like going going on loan at a young age is a lot different to being released yeah. and, and and playing yeah. proper lower league football. Um, right, lads, it's time for that lovely time at the end of the match report sort of crack where we uh, we nominate our Foxy's features man of the match. Wills, do you want to go first, mate? Yeah, same same nomination as the last match as well. Uh, Gibson, we're gonna go Gibson, Jordan Gibson. Yeah, ah, fair enough. Uh, any particular reason why? Scored one set, one up. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was I mean, kind of like the, the, you know, he was he was decent in the first half as well. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 yeah. He definitely, <laughs> definitely did have a good game. Dylan, what about you, mate? If you were uh, obviously you had a highlighted player, is he your man of the match? Uh, I had Dickinson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did well when he came on as two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, 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 any particular reason why Dickinson, mate? Just seemed really lively from when he came on, but like Alessandra had a pop shot from like thirty yards, nearly went in. Obviously, yeah. got the got the equaliser, good header. Max, yeah, Max has wonder sometimes when you see Dickinson like that, whether he's yeah. whether he's kind of a better when he comes on fresh in the yeah. second half. You know, not too late in the second half and kind of be you know be fresh. But I think we had a similar discussion about about whether that would be. You know, we'd see more out of Zach Clough if he was coming off the bench. And anyway, um, are, are you going to give us yours? I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll keep talking about Dickinson for a little bit. He, remi- uh, he actually reminds me. Do you remember Matty Robinson? He used to play out left for a couple of seasons for Carlisle. Matty Robinson when he was here. Matt Robson. Yeah, he reminds me a little bit, a little bit of that kind of style of play. He's a bit bigger yeah. though. He's got these. He's got a set of calves on him as, as Dickinson, and obviously he's a bit more physical in the air yeah. because of because of that. He can get off the ground a lot better. Yeah, um, well, that I, Robson's I say, quite short. Yeah, true. That's what that's that's why I'm pointing it yeah. out as sort of like a, like like a difference. But um, I did sort of say preseason that I thought Dickinson might have the potential to be one of the best left sided players in League Two. It just hasn't necessarily gone that way. Yet, um, it, yeah. it, it, it does look to be growing in confidence for every game. But my man of the match went to Jordan Gibson just because he had more minutes under his belt than Brennan Dickinson yeah. had. Um, like you said, he had a goal, he had an assist, he looked lively for the whole game. And if you listen to the uh, the post-match interview from Chris Beach, um, he, he asked Gibson uh, around the sort of 70th minute if he wanted to come off and he turned around and said, no, gaffer, I'm fine. So it just shows mm. a little bit of character. Um, it shows that obviously he wanted to play, and um, he, he, you know he, he had he had he had the willingness and 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 the pride to not get substituted off, which I don't think a lot of yeah. the players have at the moment. So that's it. That's everyone's Foxy's feature man of the match. I've written that down. And Dylan, this, <laughs> this year, what I'm going to do, Dylan, is that I'm going to like yeah. fight, I'm, I'm going to like make a trophy out of some like cereal boxes and stuff, um, and mm-hmm. then I'm going to like paint it, obviously, and I'm going to send it to Brunton Park with the name of the player, and I'm just going to really hope that he takes a picture with it, and uh, we can have that for the podcast. <laughs> so yeah. we're tallying, that's it. So we're tallying up, we're tallying up all of the man of the matches for the season. So uh, we'll see. If, we'll see if your pick. Gets there, mate. We'll see if Brennan Dickinson gets there. To be fair, Brennan no Dickinson's not doing too badly. I'll have a little look at the tally now. Brennan Dickinson's now up to three man of the matches, um, which which puts him equal with Jordan Gibson and um, Callum Guy. Fair enough. So there that's uh, all equal in first place there. So in good company, in good company, mate. Anyone that's else? It. Anyone else in there? Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of like ones and twos for a few players. Mellish is two. Um, yeah. and then Mella has Mella has one. I think I gave Mella one last oh, week. I remember well. you giving Mella one, yeah. And, and I, I remember, yeah, yeah. 
So they've been, <laughs> they've been banded around a little bit. They've been shared amongst the boys. They're not, no one, no one's leaping ahead just yet. Now, Dylan, you're a part of the Prawn Sandwich podcast, which is one of my favourite podcasts to listen to. I <laughs> eagerly, eagerly await every episode's <laughs> release. And not only do I listen to it on Spotify, I listen to it on, uh, I, I click on it on YouTube to give you a view there and, uh, you know, all the good stuff oh, in between. Geez, you know, yeah, just click up all those views, mate. That's all I'm doing, just clicking up all those views. But, um, <laughs> mate, the last episode was about Sven Goran Eriksson. You did a bit of a zoom in on him. Um, yes. What have you got? What have you got next? What's coming up next? Um, so, Nathan had a one on one interview uh, with an ex player that people won't know, but he uh, used to play non league football. So, they had like a interview and a bit of a feature episode on non-league football and just what goes on and um he's actually got uh he's from Sunderland himself yeah and he's one of our sponsors t7 clothing just to give him a bit of a shout out yeah he's right, called, right. called steven uh so he him and nath had a good crack unfortunately my himself and jamie couldn't get there for work right. commitments but yeah and then we've got our last episode of the second season of our football manager chronicles. What's going to happen next, Dylan? Are you going to do? Are you going to start on new teams? Are you going to like do a third season of this one? What's What's the plan? So, I got. I give you a little sneak preview. We're gonna. <laughs> we've just. We decided that we're going to leave the teams we're at. Obviously, we're not leaving the saves because I'll still play mine and stuff. But we're gonna. We're gonna disband <laughs> that after the second season. See where we're all at. Uh, see if we reached our goals, and then. For our next series, we're going to start another football manager journey. But this time, we're all going to start at the same club and see how our paths vary. Oh, oh cool. Okay. Have you got a name for it yet? Have you titled it? No, we haven't decided yet. So if anyone listening and thinks, well, that's just boring because they'll tell each other, we don't actually tell each other anything <laughs> about the saves oh. ever. So, like... When we when we're recording and telling each other, it's literally like the first time I'm hearing Nath's journey and Jay's journey, and then vice versa. Uh, so so we're gonna all have start you like the same. Played, have you like played the same number of seasons at the time that you then discuss it on the podcast? Like you maybe like yeah. So, so, so yeah. So what we did is we started like different saves on like different databases. Yeah. Um, but we talk through like. So that we start off, we talk from July to September. And that's all we, yeah. that's all we talk about. And then the next right. episode, we'll do October to January. Right. And then, so we're all at the same point. We're all in the same months. Ah. So I how really are you going to decide it. which team? We haven't, we haven't decided yet because <laughs> uh, like, we were like, right, what, what league should we go in? And then I was like, well, the English league's proper hard because football managers yeah. like nailed the money with it. Like, it's hard. And then I've already got a save with like a lower league Spanish club. Jay's already got one with a lower league Italian club. So they yeah. kind of already know which place to sign. So we're like, I think we'll be going somewhere mad like like no Bulgaria way. or something. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a so last we'll holiday we'll, destination. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to decide. We're going to decide where we're going and then we'll, like, we'll go Australia. We'll go from there. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, can yeah. you can you once once you've started at the team, like if you get offered new jobs, can you all like start going to different teams? Yeah, you, you, you can, yeah, you can yeah. do what you want. You, can do what like you, want. you all just dogs. start. You all start on yeah. the same on the on the same. We level all start the same then... team and see where ah, we go. Yeah, hey, that's gonna be so cool. <laughs> oh, man. I'm looking forward to that one, man. And uh, yeah. when you did this Fengor and Ericsson episode, I thought that was one of your best episodes to date. I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> when you were doing the research about it, was there anything that like stood out to you about Sven that was just like, that's fucking funny, that like? <laughs> well, Sven, just his affairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I, uh, anyone who hasn't listened to us, we don't really take ourselves serious. We're not good. We don't, we don't, we're not, we're not really like statisticians and uh... we do love football. Did you but, cover his time at Notts County? The uh, we dip, we, we dip, <laughs> famous. We dipped, we dipped, we dipped into it a little bit. We, we mostly covered England and like yeah. how many how, how many players he gave caps to and uh, like but... how many how many shit players he gave caps to. <laughs> Did he give a cap to Steve Guppy? No, he didn't. No, he it was did that someone else. 
he did give cuffs to people like Lee Boyer and stuff like that, though. So. <laughs> Lee Boyer seemed all right at one point when he was Chris... at, when Bowie and Woodgate were together at Leeds. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, that was a great idea. The Di- violent Dyer, days. Dyer, Dyer, Dyer and Bowie, <laughs> Dyer, Dyer that would have been a combination. <laughs> you know? Never quite made it into the same England team, did they? Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, mate, where can where can where can my listeners go to go and to go and listen to the Prawn Sandwich podcast? We've got a lot of new listeners since the last time that that you were on, so to tell them where to Spawn. find you. Yeah, it's just anywhere you listen to podcasts: uh, Acast, Spotify, iTunes. The lot we're on the lot YouTube. The lot anywhere you get them. Beautiful, we've, mate. We've beautiful. grown since we started. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dylan, mate, thanks very much for cheering us up, man. We and Wills are going to see this through until the end. We're going to have a little look ahead towards Sutton. But it's been an absolute pleasure to have your independent point of view on the Carlisle game. Thanks very much for coming, man. Cheers, lads. Enjoy. Cheers, mate. Thanks, man. See you next time. See you later. Bye, mate. Bye. (laughs) <laughs> right. yeah, mate, that was lovely having Dylan uh, on the show there. That's perked me back up again after we were getting a little bit depressed. Uh, how about you, Will? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, he seemed quite complimentary about us. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe things happen. This is this is always what happens whenever I hear, like, the views of a fan from another club. <laughs> Often it's kind of like, yeah, maybe we're not as terrible as we think we are. See, that's what I wanted to happen. See, I wanted somebody to make us feel a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> we still need to, you know, we still need to <laughs> sort, sort certain things out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of issues there. But, you know, there's some I good think things. More up front, yeah, more up front than in defence, in my opinion. But, um, you know, yeah. we haven't seen that um, Denzai yet. Don't well, that's he's... true. Yeah. What's Not going on there? No one's mentioned him or anything either. Nothing's being said. Um, so, I mean, I hope everything's okay um, w- with yeah, that one. He, uh, he's, 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 that. He's, he's about as close to the squad as Toure is at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there, you know, I mean, I mean, there's another one as well. Like, um, uh, that would have been a good option. It seems that Toure's, yeah, it seems that Toure's not in the right kind of state of mind at the moment, but. Mm. Is that maybe kind of like a knock-on effect of not being in the squad? Like the, there are times, like there were times yesterday when you think like his kind of like strength and industry up front is something that we could be crying out for. And if he doesn't look like his heart's in it in training, maybe you just gotta take the risk. Sometimes players like him are like that. The kind of you know, they never look like the you know they never look like the kind of trying that hard in training. I think um, Chris, I think uh, um, Chris Lumsden talks about uh, one or two of his former colleagues in that way. I, I can't remember which ones, so I don't want to uh... <laughs> incriminate anyone. Well, I don't want to. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to. Any, any potential any. any any potential future um, guests? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I feel it can it can have a look back. I feel like he might have been saying it about Michael Bridges. Oh, that, um, I've got no chance of getting fucking Bridgey. Like, he's yeah, yeah. Big t- Billy Big Bollocks, isn't he, Bridgey? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it might have been Bridges, but don't hold me to that. Oh. That um, I think he was saying, like, was always kind of like, it never really looked like he was that interested in training, but then would turn up on the day. And just be sometimes he'd only mint. sometimes he'd only turn up for five minutes on the day, and he'd still be fucking good enough to win us the game. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what Bridgie. That's what Bridgie. As after speaking to a couple of players that have played with him, that seems to be like yeah. that. You know, Bridgie would disappear for about eighty minutes and pop up and score yeah. two in the two two in the last ditches <laughs> and win you the game. Um, yeah. But you know that's how magical he, that's how magical he was. Really, that's that's back in day when we had story money to throw at people. Yeah. You know. We weren't afraid to to have investments and and really kick on. Uh, talking about kicking on, we'll kick on the show and we'll talk about Carlisle United's next opponents, who are Sutton United. 
newly promoted Sutton United, who have been doing better than a lot of people would have thought they were doing. Wills, you put them in your bottom two, didn't you, when you had the predictions at the start of the season? Um, obviously, yeah. I'm not I'm not saying after seven games that they're not going to go down, mate. I'm definitely not yeah. saying that. They're only sitting one point above. Um, somehow, by the way, Scunthorpe, I mean, I don't mean somehow, obviously maths is involved, but Scunthorpe got a point and still went down a position. But then again, we went, we got a point and we went down a position. So I suppose maths is maths. Um, Sutton are a little bit of a surprise package, mate. Um, they don't seem to be sticking to the script this season. Hartlepool also had a good start to the season. Sutton beat them. Um, yeah. And and then last or the or, or the weekend prior have have recently just gone down two nil to Exeter. Exeter beat Scumthorpe. What was it like four or five nil or something before yeah. we played them? Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I don't think that's necessarily a good indication of of how good a team is because another team can beat them by a certain amount of goals. But yeah. away to Sutton, what's the deal with the pitch conditions down there? I mean, they must have sorted it. Um, there mm. was some, uh, there was kind of some issues at the start of the season. I think they, yeah, they had to have games switched to another ground. But um, the the they 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 had a slow start. Um, it took them a long time to get their first win. Then they got another. Then they got beat by a, what looks to be like a good exit to the team. Mm. Uh, they've got Richie Bennett. Oh, it's Sutton, yeah. Yeah, so that's a thing. Um, yeah. Don't know if you played in the last game. I'll have a quick look now, and I will tell you. Do, 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 yeah, he did. He started. Oh, you're quicker than me. <laughs> We've got is Richie that... Bennett. We've got Dean Bazanis. Yeah, I've got to say, was that Dean Bazanis in goals? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's uh, um, still playing. <laughs> yeah, he's getting on now, but um, be, yeah, yeah, he's still playing. Mm, mm. Well, like I said, Sutton being a bit of a surprise package. And, uh, Here, Carl, do you know how old Dean Bazanis is? God, have you just Googled? I heard you typing away furiously. Yeah. Go on, tell us. 30. Oh. Why the yeah. fuck is he? I feel like he's been around like for ages. Why does it feel like he's been around for ages? Yeah. I mean, he must have been young when he was at Oldham. Mm. It feels like he's been around for ages, mate. Not like, no. No. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. He's 30 years old. He um, he signed for Oldham in 2011, so he was only 21 having just been released from Liverpool without playing for them, obviously, and been through their academy. No, oh, right, OK. I mean, that, that's, that's that's obviously, you know, where, where I kind of, like, yeah. recognise his name from is, is the old Liverpool sort of academy days, that, yeah. kind, of, that kind of thing. But well, um, was, it... I mean, like, when he signed for us, he was only, um, be like, what, 20, 25? Hmm. But I don't know. I guess like it felt like he'd been at Oldham for a long time. Looking at his stats, he'd been at Oldham for two seasons. Then there he went know. to Greece and was released. So, but so so when he came to us, he had that kind of air of a player kickstarting his career. But he wasn't actually that old. Yeah, I mean, twenty five is um, young for a keeper. Yeah, I was a mixed bag then. I mean, there's no reason why he wouldn't be a good keeper with all that experience yeah. under his belt. He'd be a good. A good age for it now. Uh, Carlisle are making the uh, the journey over to Sutton. Um, like like I've mentioned, with the pitch over yeah. there, might play a little bit of a factor. We'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll have to see, won't we? Um, yeah, well, it's a newly laid pitch, so presumably it's in decent nick and everything. And I believe. Be... Yeah, I believe that Sutton are the only team this season so far to lose against Oldham. Um, so ooh, I'd really like us to thrash them. I'd really like us to 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 walk away with at least two or three goals and uh, see Clough get amongst it a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say two nil. I'm gonna be too optimistic. Yeah, yeah, two-nil. yeah. I'm gonna go with an also optimistic. Can I just go same as you? Can I go two nil as well? Of course you can. Of course <laughs> you can. 
It's how you feel. It's how you feel. Yeah. So of course you can, mate. Of course you can. Um, yeah, I think that's a fair enough uh, um, yeah. uh, prediction. Uh, I've, again, for for the third week, uh, for the third game in a row, and the third week in a row, actually, it's been yeah. crazy. We haven't had any midweek games in a while. Uh, we've yeah. got one coming up in the Papa uh, Papa John's Pizza Trophy thing again uh, against Everton under twenty threes, which I'm sure is going to be an enthralling encounter for anybody in attendance. But yeah, I think uh, I think I think let's 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 do it this time. You know, let's 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 start better. Uh, because that's been the problem. That's what Beachy's obviously been telling us as well. Um, his main issues are the way that we seem to be starting games and just not getting into them at all. And um, I hope we go out there and we get an early goal and then we score we score another one and then we just control the game. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah, to have a... I mean, that's kind of what we need. We need to make a fast start to a game. Uh, we did that quite a few times last season to good effect. And... This season, we've been making some very slow starts to games. Yeah. So. But Wills, mm. mate, uh, we'll do we'll do a very quick uh, news roundup. There was uh, just one or two things that sort of caught my eye this week. George Tanner made his full debut for Bristol City and yeah. uh, was on the winning side. Uh, Bristol got a last-minute winner from another ex-Carlisle player called Naki Wells. So uh, there you go. There's a double mm. barrel of uh, ex-Carlisle names coming at you. And also, yeah. another thing that caught my eyes this week is that Jordan Gibson, very deservingly so, was placed in the English Football League Team of the Week. So hats off to him for that, right? Yeah. Not Yeah, and um, the... So... I saw that. Uh, it was in the League Two team of the week, or was he in the full team of the week? It's in the League. Uh, it... uh, oh, he might be in the, that as well. But from what I've seen, it's just in the League Two. Because so is uh, Cody Whelan's also in the League Two team of the week. Oh, I know this is the English Football League team of the week. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Jordan Gibson's also in the. Okay, gotcha. Ah, so, right. Okay. I didn't realize uh, so there was League a two, distinction. Yeah. Well, that's what I was because I'd seen that and I'd seen that um, Gibson and Wheeler were in it, but then I only saw Gibson being mentioned as being in the team of the week. But then that makes sense if there's another more prestigious team of the week for the entire for the entire EFL that he's made. I think that's uh, that's Wheeler's second feature in the in the English Football League two team of the week. Yeah, because I've definitely seen him amongst those names in that kind of formation before. Mm. There's so many different things to follow at the moment. It's I didn't even realise there was a <laughs> distinction. So that's cool. There's sort of like an all encompassing English Football League team of the week as well. Yeah, I've got twice as much things to be looking out for. Uh, talking about looking out for things, look out for us next week on the podcast. Uh, I will be going on holiday. Uh, which means that next week you guys have a superstar X blue interview. You've already been told who it is. And if you missed it, it's Paul Arnie Arneson. Uh, there's an interview with him that you guys can all look forward to listening to next week. And the week after that, I think because I'm going to be scrambling to get back from the Costa del Sol or just some part of Spain, doesn't matter where I'm going. Um, <laughs> That I, that that I don't want to struggle to sort of like throw a podcast together and stress all about it. So we might be taking a week off. So uh, don't don't worry, just miss us, you know, just miss us and then come back in full force the week after because that's what we'll be doing. Um, so Wills, I hope you enjoy the break. Thank you very yeah. much for joining me. It's been it's been great joining you and um, also being in the pod with Dylan. It's been good as well. It was nice to have Dylan that extra. A uh, bit of analysis. I think we're going to look into getting a bit more of that going on. Obviously, I think we've already teased the fact that Mark Boyd might be making an appearance after the Barrow game to give us his insight on the Barrow game. So that'll be interesting, listening to an ex-pro as well. But uh, Dylan was spot on uh, today. I really enjoyed that. And uh, it makes me look forward to even more uh, people coming to join us here on the Blue Army podcast. Mm. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's a good way to sign off, I think, mate, don't you? Yeah, I think that's All right. a pretty good ending. Yeah, all right then. Well, that's <laughs> enough from me and Wills this week. This has been episode 
36 of the Blue Army podcast, and I am enjoying it probably even more than I was during episode 35. Um, and uh, I didn't believe I could top that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward to you all being able to hear the Paul Arnie Arneson interview next week. And then I'm looking forward to having a little bit of a break and then looking more forwards because that's how the future works to having you all back listening to me and Wills once again talk about Carlisle and how they've been getting on in that particular week. <laughs> it's a thrill a minute right here on the Blue Army Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Bye, Wills. Bye. Bye, listeners. Bye. Bye. Bye for now. <laughs>